welcome to this week's episode of Art Wisdom with Chris and Kat. And this week we're talking about managing your emotions and uncertainty as an artist. It's a big one, Kat, isn't it? Because, you know, it's- go up and down and, you know, sometimes <laughs> things just aren't working for us. And it's how to stay up the, the lows and, and keep yeah. ourselves going. Yeah, I found that I've I've personally found a lot of uncertainty um, and I suppose it, it co- probably comes into a lot of like imposter syndrome and that kind of stuff as well. But like actually with the art creation process, you know, like, are they going to like what I'm making? What happens if I'm a, everyone finds out I'm a fraud and I'm not a really good artist? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? All of that stuff for me comes up, but I know that there's also like, a financial side of things as well for a lot of people like you know when when is the next sale going to come how do you keep positive despite all of that you know yeah, so tricky one if you if your finances are you know you've given everything up and decided to be an artist but like really um any business that you start should really i i think it's my opinion should be a side hustle before you actually are up and running and get it go because it takes that pressure off you know not just as an artist but any business you know you put the hours in after after your day job and yeah I go, agree build clientele I think that's a very fair point because when I started painting I was working as a cleaner <laughs> right part-time so that I could Bear in mind, though, actually, it was also my business. <laughs> so I started two businesses at the same time. But I was working as a cleaner pretty much full time for the for the eight months while I got my first campaign up. Because to get my first successful campaign up, it actually only took eight months. Um, and bear in mind, it wasn't just like get a campaign together. I was teaching myself how to paint because I can't bloody paint. <laughs> so... anyone in in, in anyone's books even if you're a really fantastic painter is a great effort to mm, build the excitement the clientele and find people to love right so what that eight months looked like for me was like basically like three or four hours every Saturday and what I would do is obviously I would do all the work during the week and I'd be bloody knackered and exhausted every day and then the weekends I'd get like a day or like half a day or whatever. And then I would paint. Um, and then I would just be updating my Facebook and my Instagram and my Twitter and all of that stuff as I was going. Um, and sharing what I was doing consistently over eight months allowed me to build up like a level of momentum so that when someone else actually suggested, hey, you should run this campaign, I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> all right, I think that must've happened. I think I was painting on the weekends for like probably like the first four months and then someone suggested hey you should run a campaign and then the following four months was like basically getting that set up yeah um but I do think you know um it is it also I think that what I realize after just you know describing this to a lot of other people is like what is your current position right because some people are in a financial position where they can just full-time eight months and that's no problem they're in like you know they either have either a financial backing from like previous work or maybe they are in a family unit where they're supported or something like that but obviously not everybody has the same you know risk profile some people have like mortgages and children and all of that other stuff which you know you can't just necessarily be like oh well I'll deal with that later because I think that the pressure and stress of you know supporting other human beings as well as yourself yeah that impacts the way that you can even make art I think sometimes so Mm. you know if you've got all of that on your shoulders then definitely you know consider I think the side hustle is such a strong move in managing the uncertainty as well because it's not your all or nothing Mm. I think I think I think I do feel like like publicly it's like always it's always kind of promoted like all or nothing like this is the only way but I don't know if that's actually really the most sound advice because I think also it's like a snowball effect right running a business it's slow at the beginning and it's a bit ploddy and all of that stuff now the only thing is it's like 
you know, if you are so exhausted, so not just physically, but mentally from a day job that you can't bring yourself to do art, then that's a place where you have to start to learn to carve out time, whether it's asking to have a day off or, you know, and I know that's not always possible, yeah. but finding some way, whatever that might look like. I think um, scheduling as well, you know, because if you go, well, okay, I have this time and it's non-negotiable your mm. family will work around you but I think as especially women wives mums we just don't give ourselves that luxury of going these two hours you don't even talk to me this is what I'm doing we just <laughs> we don't we won't do that so that's you yeah. know so if you schedule it it's like schedule it it'll get done if you don't schedule it other things will creep in to it yeah I think that is a very fair point. Um, and I think that's one good way to, to get started. But I think that obviously once you're started yeah. and once you're in the cycle, then like a lot of other things come up. And for me, most of mine was around kind of like performance anxiety. Like, you know, am I good enough as an artist? I'd be constantly looking at other people's artwork, which I know is terrible. <laughs> You shouldn't really compare yourself. It's but thinking still hard like, to do oh. now, isn't it? It's still hard to do now that you, you know, I'll, like don't go on Instagram. Somebody said to me, don't go on Instagram for inst inspiration. You know, go to art galleries, go to other places, but don't go on Instagram, don't go on Facebook. I, mm. I, I don't personally don't find it motivating when I see like thousands of artists who are amazing and then you sort of go, well, how am I supposed to get my work out there when there's all these amazing people? So if you feel like that, feel it. Acknowledge that you're feeling it. Steer away from it because it's not serving you. Mm. Yeah. I always, I always say, like, you know, when, you know, instead of, but if you are, you know, because, like, the thing is, it's a, it's a challenge to say steer away from social media, but when you're starting out, you have to be there and you've got to be posting, you got to be present, you got to be commenting. It's very hard to do both things. But I think just changing the, you know, changing your opinion around it. So, you know, instead of looking at someone and saying, that's never going to be me, just being like, that's going to be me at some point. Mm. And like changing that narrative, I think is really was helpful for me because I recognized I couldn't not be on social media because yeah. in order to set up and build a successful presence, like you sort of have to be on there. Yeah, and I get sort that. Of just but it's not for just don't go. No, not for comparison. Money. Yeah, no, not for comparison and that. And then when you get to a certain stage with the art, you know, that thing, oh, I could I could never be me. That's like you'll get to that stage where that's completely fine because what you've got is unique to you. So it's like right. completely unique with what you do. I'm completely unique what I do. And I do see other people's work and think, oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> my work's amazing too for what I do. Yeah. So it's like appreciating it. I think it takes time to get to that point though, in a way, because there are, there will be probably times when you're earlier in your career where you're like, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I don't know, Definitely. Don't know as well. Like, do you know what I mean? I think like, especially like I look at my early paintings. Also, I think changing my narratives around what, like, what is a good painting and like how I even appreciate my own artwork. So like, at the beginning, you know, when you're trying to learn a medium, like I remember just struggling a lot and just looking at them and just being like, I couldn't see necessarily the, I, I couldn't see the vibe that I was wanting to create because I can see the struggle. But instead of like looking at those artworks, like they are mistakes and I could do better and they're rubbish. I was just started to learn, look at them as this is a lesson. And I actually started a notepad and every single artwork I would write down, um, I would write down something that I learned, mm. right? And I would, and if I found one thing that I learned, it was a, the painting was a success. Yeah. And it's funny because like, I look at them now and I'm like, that artwork 
technically is crap, but I learned how to gesso a canvas. That artwork, I learned how to varnish a canvas. Mm. That one, I actually learned how to clean my brushes properly because I didn't know that for the first few times. Yeah. You know, the next one, I learned that there was, I remember the, the, there was one painting and I was trying to do a, a solar eclipse, like an annular eclipse where you could see the, the sun all the way around the moon. And I it was just, I couldn't, I couldn't get it to work. And then that was the point I realized that it was like transparent and opaque yellows. I was like on a black canvas trying to paint a transparent yellow, be like, where's the color go? Why is this not working? Yeah. I realized that lemon yellow is bloody transparent. So even though I can see that painting, it's full of like, you can just even tell the brush strokes. I was having a hard time. But I now look at that as like, wow, that was like a formative moment in my career where I learned something super important. I use all the time now, all the time. And yeah. even now, like, I, you know, I, I, it's almost like I've actually forgotten to keep on picking out learnings, but there are still learnings to be had. And I feel like that helps propel you forward as far as like the actual aesthetics, you know what I mean? You, I think we've got very different journeys, Kat, because you mm. sound like you've just learned all by yourself. Yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a lie, actually. I've, I've, I've watched some YouTube tutorials. I've watched Bob Ross. <laughs> that's how I learned. So not entirely in isolation, but, you know, I've never had like art tuition and all yeah. of that stuff. That's like, that's amazing. To, like, so you have, you've been through all of that sort of, I've, I've learned with tutors all of the time. Really, really. Yeah. Like I painted, you go off and you do your own thing, but I've had, probably learnings and a painting mentor for the last 10 years to to help me on my journey so if there's anything that you know, I'm saying stuck with but pe journey painting is just you just have to keep going and keep trying it and you know and that so yeah it's really interesting yeah. the different journeys actually right but yeah. even with even with training right yeah I don't know if this is true for you but every painting has an ugly phase Oh, God. Or can do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like not being like, I'm a failure when you were in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember it took me, took me like almost a year and a half to realize that that was just, that's just a given. Yeah. Like, don't feel bad about it. That's like every flipping painting you're ever going to do ever will have a phase where you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> but yeah. I think that's a, you, that's a big learning thing as well like because you you're trying to rush and it's a, maybe a bit I always think it's a big ego thing because you mm. want to do your painting and you want it to look beautiful the whole time because mm. you want to th especially when you if you're a group of people and you're in a group of artists as well right. you know what uh, your painting to be like mine looks really crap <laughs> and it's that <laughs> comparison thing again when you're it's around hard, yeah. other people you want it every stage you go oh it really needs to be nice it needs to be nice because I don't want to be look like I'm not a good painter but being right. a painter actually is very messy it's very messy it and is. it has to go through the stages where it's just not looking good and I suppose I've learned I can spend I, and I'm quite happy to spend weeks and weeks on a painting mm. because I know that I'm like you said I'm learning every single time I do a painting I'm learning something so yeah. it's like I suppose it's to have that um like this is all mental isn't it it's all my it's all it I is all mental set, like I'm learning every single time I'm going through a, a stage of a painting because I feel like everyone's different every time I do a painting it's different I'm learning mm. again of you know how how to how to do this one I do and maybe that's why it keeps my interest you know I think even sometimes when you do really good painting you go oh you next time you're like oh shit I'm gonna have yeah. to top that <laughs> Fuck. yeah you start again you think god I thought I'd nail these rocks and that and you think these oh, are rubbish yeah. <laughs> and I've scraped because I do palette knife scrape many are off and then think right, right I'll just start this one again I've tried to be too precious or I've tried to do too much. It's just like relax and, and do it. So if you feel yeah. that with your painting, that's natural as well. As yeah, because I think it. you're you're right. Wait, right? you're talking about just wait until it gets natural and stuff. But I think that um it basically is like hitting flow state with your painting, mm. right? But 
as you're learning, there's a lot of points where you're not in flow because yeah. you're still learning. Like flow really comes when you're, you you just do it so automatically that it just falls out of you. But that is not a lot of the journey. Yeah. I would say 90% of the beginning is not that. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. To, to feel like, yeah. And I feel like a lot of people think, oh, that's just how it is. I should just, you know, because my thing also was learning with ADHD, right? My, mm. um, my struggle with even um, coming to sit down and focus on an artwork and I'd have people say, oh yeah, I could just, I could sit and I could draw and I could paint for hours and hours and hours. And there was me like, oh God, I can't, I struggle to do 20 minutes. Am I a real artist? <laughs> Maybe I'm not meant for this, you know. <laughs> so. There's a lot of judgment on ourselves all the time oh. with, you know, today. And you know where judgment also crops up is prices um, mm. and what you charge. Um, and, and I always, I don't even know where I heard this first or I don't even know if I came up with this first or whatever, but like, you know, the price that you sell your artwork is really an indication of your self-worth. Mm. to many degrees right um because and, and also right to separate the two uh, like I talk about this often the difference between art and craft you know the craft which we've been talking about is often the the, the skill or the ability to create the piece that you're wanting to create the it's the detail it's the it's the confidence, it's all of that stuff. That's like the craftsmanship side of things. But the art itself is actually almost a separated thing. It's kind of like the meaning, the, the experience, the emotions, the purpose behind the art, because the art is really just a representation of your greater, deeper meaning for it. When, you when I talk about, I don't just be like, oh, this is a blue nebula <laughs> space. I'll talk about like how vast the universe is, how incredible it is, like how we forget that it's out there in every direction, mm. you know, and, and help people get that little existential moment because it is good to like give sense of perspective, right? Yeah. So, but the truth is, is that art is a luxury market and people aren't necessarily buying wall decorations. I say this often but and I've said it in the past episode, but, you know, if they wanted to buy a wall decoration off you, they would go to Target, they would go to Kmart, they would go to whatever cheap, you know, they'd go to Amazon or whatever, and they would just buy a generic picture of live, laugh, love, or whatever it is, you know what I mean? And they would hang it on their wall because it's just about filling a blank wall. Like original artwork, at least to me, and I know that there are many different opinions, but it's not about wall decoration what you're doing is conveying a message that people can connect with right and hopefully you do it in a skillful beautiful way but maybe not because maybe that's your style mm. um you know but yeah. I think that can once you realize that I think that actually really helps when you start to form the prices of your artwork because the prices are based on the value right and the but how do you put a value on meaning and purpose you know it's but this is what we're talking one. about, isn't it? I suppose, because mm. as, as you're saying, the value that you put on your art is the value that you are feeling towards it. So yeah. it's like, how do you keep going when you, you're not feeling of value, you know? And that this is the mindset thing again. It's like you, you have maybe look into what's going on for you. What's happening yeah. in your mind? What are you saying to yourself? What are you focusing on? Because, you know, we all have the little um, thing in our head that is talking to us. So we've got to make sure that that what we're saying to ourselves is helpful. And even, you know, sometimes, you, you know, it's great. Catch yourself if you're not if you're saying something which is not helpful. Fantastic. You've caught yourself. So the first thing we need to do is be aware. Be aware. You know what, I just I want to stop that and just say you said something really important is that you didn't say what was in the in your mind was good or bad. You said it was helpful or unhelpful. And I feel like that's a very helpful thing to way to look at it, right? Sorry, yeah. Karen, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, I catch. <laughs> which way it's steering you. And you know, if you are going through a time where it's really difficult, you're creating fantastic artworks, you're putting it out there, you're feeling like you're doing everything you can, you may or may not be, you know, you, you, your business skills may not be terrific, 
but that's something you know listen to all our podcasts <laughs> see if you can improve them look at look at where the holes are you know if your art's fantastic because you may be a beginner and it's not and you you may find that you actually need to improve your art skills or it may be you're not getting the the followings that you feel that you you need break it down are you putting the hours into it are you um is your business strategy good do you have a business strategy so there's lots of things that you can look at you know if things aren't working for you don't just throw in the towel and go this just is not working for me and i don't know what to do break it and like also like is it actually working for you and you're just being overly hard on yourself yeah, parts might be working for you and keep those parts going but other parts you know you may need to just move on and if you know things i've found in the past if it's really hard and you're doing something which you don't like and it's really hard it's really not going to be a great thing for you to carry on doing it's maybe like you maybe need to drop that bit replace it by something else because we need to keep putting ourselves out there when you say that are you thinking about something specific though because I think sometimes there are hard stuff that you don't want to do but you've got to do it in order to succeed um but maybe if it's just like doing a little bit of it every morning just getting it out of the way first thing and getting yeah. it over and done with whatever yeah. that is yeah you know like um I suppose like you love the social media stuff. Social media for me is more of a challenge, you know? So it's finding ways to do it that you go, oh, I don't mind doing it like that. Like I love doing the right. interviews. I'll do more interviews. That's sort of, that's can get me out there with what I do. So it's like, what do you like to do? You know, mm. find a way because yeah you've got to do you've got to do the promoting and it seems to be from the artists that I've talked about they don't like to do the promoting side of it that's the that's the side and unfortunately it's a huge 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 part yeah like yeah. like you don't want to necessarily go to the grave being the world's best unknown artist yeah you know what I mean like if you have a mission and a meaning and a purpose behind what you're doing and it is something that will get you up every morning because you really believe in what it is that you're so you're creating artwork about a mission that you really believe in whatever that is mm. you know whether it's to bring joy to people and to brighten people's lives because there have been times in yours where they haven't you've not had that or whether it's like mine you know connecting people to the greater cosmos as a way to help people create you know yeah. Uh, perspective in their lives right whatever that is something that's so but like that having all of that purpose mission and values and good work is mm. worthless if no one gets to find out about it well actually that's not strictly true I mean yeah. I understand that there is art for just doing it for you and that's fantastic obviously in this podcast we're talking about running a business yeah and being not successful as an artist business, but Right, which is fine. And if, if you don't want to have a business, that's okay. Don't, yeah, don't, you don't have to have a business. But, you know, I, look, I would say that it's about a level of impact you can have, right? And sometimes it's worth facing those demons to have that impact on other people if oh. helping other people is high on your list. Not even that, cat. Like, it's a journey. It's a journey mm. to maybe who you who you need to be or who you're going to be because it's not mm. easy and then it's i suppose both of us love growth don't we <laughs> we love growth and learning highest <laughs> uh, yeah, highest value is growth and learning so right. growth and learning is not oh this is my opinion it's not an easy journey because if it's an easy journey you're not growing you're just sitting in your your comfort zone there so to be who you want to be, what do you need to change about yourself? What do you need to grow about yourself? Mm. Because something will need to step up to take you to where you need to go. Otherwise, you don't, you're there. You don't need to do anything. Wow. That is actually a really important thing. Like yeah. being brave wasn't ever meant to be easy because if it was, it wouldn't be being brave. That's right. And, That's right. And 
I would say actually like running a business in general is one of those things that will push your limits in a way that most things will never do. And then also I think specifically art as well, because like you're creating pieces, like someone said, like, I don't know, someone said, you know, even if you're not painting a physical picture of your own face, yeah, it's still a self-portrait. Everything you do, it's, it's a yeah. portrait of your interests, your curiosity, the mission or the beliefs that you have. It's all a self-portrait of what's going on inside most often, yeah. or there's even things that you're you, curious yeah. about. Yeah, there's yeah, part, part of you part in it. You. Like so when you paint, you know, like days, um, it's really dynamic and um, confident. And then sometimes you're fiddly and messy and, you know, and all that. And it's because you're feeling insecure. You're feeling not confident that mm. time. And that's sometimes I've scraped all my rocks back because I've been fiddly and messy and, you know, and, and it, it's in the painting. You can tell. Yeah. It comes out in the artwork, doesn't it? Yeah. It does come out. Yeah. So this is a journey of, of finding out more of you, being more of you, helping you step up. So that helps me actually, you know, with all these things that I think, oh, I don't want to do that. Or that's a bit of a stretch for me, you know, and I think, well, growth is a really high value of mine. It's it's like the highest value. So it's like an old Tony Robbins saying is that if you can't, you must. And I've had that for probably the last 30 years, you know. If you can't, you must. Oh, do you, you want to explain that a bit more? Uh, it's just like. If you don't want to do something, you know, even sometimes it's talking to somebody. If you think, oh, I need to go and network. I need to go and talk to them. And I'm not naturally a, you know, um, an extrovert. I'm not, you know, if you get to know me, you probably go, yeah, you are. But <laughs> naturally, <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just leave everybody else and I'll, they can go and talk and network. So that I can't, I can't, you must. Oh, you can't, you must. Right. So. Yeah, so, so it's, it's basically like, the words that you say instead yeah. of saying I can't, you say I must. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I like I that. Think, I've done, I think I've got that the wrong way around. I've been saying it for years as well. Maybe I haven't said it for a while. No, not the wrong way around, but um yeah. But anyway, you know it's the same sort of thing. It's like if you feel like I don't want to do this right now, it's like, okay, I have to then. I have to because. I feel something saying I don't want to do it. So I'm holding my back. I'm holding myself back here for some reason. Mm. There's some fear. So it's like, yeah. can't you must? And I do you it know every what? time. Um, Ian's favorite saying is by Will Smith. We'll have a we'll have a saying off you. I'll you bring Tony Robbins. I'll bring Will Smith. He says, if you're scared, do it scared. Yeah. And I quite like that one as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you have to. Stay. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah. And yeah. I've, so um, I've been doing like a bit of sales training and part of the sales training and it was it was in another event as well was these, you know, the prize in you have to be the prize and you know, we have to think of ourselves as the prize. And they said, you know, you, you hear these names, Gucci, Mercedes, Porsche, Chris Mercer artist. And how do you right. feel, how do you feel if you if you go, you know, Gucci's Mercedes kept making artists you know it's a real litmus test I felt like when I first did it because you sort of go oh, oh that's a bit you know but if you don't think of yourself like that how are other people going to think of yourself like that right 100 percent we could do it with artists couldn't we we could do with artists that we admire that's a little little um exercise for everybody <laughs> that's actually Three great artists that you admire that. and stick your name on the end and you know i suppose maybe the first time you might go a bit oh. but but you know work our, work ourselves into it so, to, so we feel like you know we're accepting our own greatness that's amazing. I love that. I genuinely, genuinely, I want to start doing that all the yeah. time. I'm going to change my name. I haven't done that. <laughs> my name is now Gucci Mercedes Catherine Machen. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? It's a bloody good point. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you can't take yourself seriously, yeah. or if you can't see a future where you see, because also here's the thing. We, you know, we're making artwork for the long term. This mm. isn't disposable art. We're not making stuff that is 
bought and thrown away. We're making like, and I often talk to it, think about it is I'm making heirlooms. Like I'm using paints that are designed to last 300 years, yeah. you know, and I put a lot of time and effort into making sure that everything's like my paintings are, st- are stable because they are designed to pass down generations. I want yeah. these to be still around when everyone's stopped talking to each other because they've all got like brain taps and we're just telepathically <laughs> floating around or whatever but you know what I mean like we're making yeah. heirlooms so even if you aren't ready to say hey right now I'm Gucci yeah. Mercedes mm. Rolls Royce or whatever the, the luxury band brands are yeah that me in this future year this piece is going to be work because even like thinking about those beginning pieces right I, I've started to think about those beginning pieces as like, what if you were to get hold of Pablo Picasso's very first series of sketches? Yeah. Like how valuable would they I be? He was rubbish. I bet he was rubbish cash. <laughs> but he was terrible back then. But that's what you're buying, aren't you? You're there's something like watching a few art history programs and seeing like their early works and saying like yeah you know obviously this they were like still forming their skills and you could see yeah. the almost struggle with it and and how endearing that was because you could recognize that you already could see the end result right you knew they became very great very well respected artists yeah so those beginning stages those struggles that you went through were like the most important thing like I I held on to my very first painting that I ever did yeah. Even though I could tell I was struggling because I had no understanding of how to paint. Mm. But I know that that's going to be like, it's one of the most valuable things I've ever, I've ever, uh, ever had. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but this is looking a at your journey. own early artwork. Sorry. sorry. I was going to say, looking at your own early artwork mm. like that is priceless. Yeah. And mm. acknowledge how far you've come, you know, because mm. this isn't a, for me, it's not about art, it's about growth and finding out who you are as a person mm. you know it's it takes us on a journey of um lots of lots of different things you know and and that gucci um versace litmus test check how you're feeling if you are mm. if you do feel like oh god no that's not fantastic you've just tapped in to to goal there because right you, become aware that you don't feel as much as they are. Right. Or if Just those, aren't, those aren't brands that you aspire to, find yeah. the brands, whatever brands it is that you aspire to, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or as you said, people, you know, name the the role models yeah. and the people that you, you look up to and then put your name in there. Because they're just oh. people. And then and if right. we, held, we put somebody on a pedestal and we're, da- we're down here, then mm. you know you've got to refigure how you're thinking about that because we're all just people they're just yeah. people who may have a certain skill level that you don't have yet you may have a better skill level than them they may have a better right. marketing strategy than you have you know they might just be more confident they may be more confident how many times have we seen go back to artists oh. again that i think what the hell you know they're really not I don't think their work is fantastic it's great I think it's some of it is complete rubbish and they are like really soaring and doing amazingly well we've all seen that but their confidence level is taking them to wherever they want to go oh, yeah so you know figure yeah. out what it is you know because we it's not good for any of us to put anybody on a pedestal because we're all unique mm. and we've all got our own things you know what? And that just makes me think of some one last thing is um, this thing called the artist curse, right? Mm. Is that you can never see your artwork for the first time. Yes. You know, yes. you, you know, you've been there, you've been sitting with it, you've been working it. You can't walk into a room for the first time and just be like, whoa, you know, and just be yeah. presented with every single brush stroke all at once, mm. you know. Yeah. You never get that, but you get that with everybody else's artwork. That's and I think that's true. often why you look at other people's artwork and you're, wow, you know, but they might be thinking, oh, I struggled for two months with that piece. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 that's really good. So uh, we're recognizing that. So what are your top three things, Chris? Um, I'm going to go a bit different this week because um, 
something came up on my feed and I thought, oh, that's so good and so great to what we're talking about at the moment. So it's five questions. So, okay. So question number one is what's great about this problem? So it just like gets us to look at, you know, what's really good about it. Because when you say that, could you give an example? What's great about this problem? Say you're not getting any um, feedback from your social posts. What's right. great about this problem? Social posts aren't working. Okay, what did I put in that post? It gives you information to go on to start with. That was a picture of this, this and this. Okay, that didn't seem to go down too well. What time did I post it? You know, you've got... Mm stuff that you can look at what time did I post it um what else could there be um anyway you're just basically learning something new right. you you've got learn. like you've you've got the list of what not to do and all of that stuff okay yeah. I like that yeah next time you put it out you can go okay well I'll put one in situ see if that gets any better I'll post it at a different time of day you know, you right. might like to go, well, you post the same thing three times, see if you get the same problem, you know. Yeah. It's not perfect yet. So you can all come up with things, you know, they're all going to be unique to each person as well. So that's not perfect quite yet. What am I willing to do to make it the way I want? So that's a big <sighs> thing because sometimes we're not willing to do a whole heap. And you've got to look at you that as what? well. I call that the rock star effect is like when you're in a crowd and you're looking up at the rock star and you go, I wish that was me on that stage, <laughs> you know, yeah, with all, right. all the, you yeah, know, but, but then what were they willing to do <laughs> to, yeah. to get to that stage? Yeah. So yeah. I think there's a difference between wanting to do the work and wanting to be in the place. Yeah. Yeah. And the fourth one is what am I willing to no longer do in order to make it the way I want? So, you know, Ooh. I'm not going to sit and watch TV for three hours. I'm actually going to sit on and like some posts. So, you know, what are you not willing to do? And maybe not even be big things. It might be little things. And how can I enjoy the process while I do what is necessary to make it the way I want? Because that's all, mm. you know, always important. You've got to enjoy it. Or you're not going to keep doing it, you know keep doing that so they are five questions and I will write them in the post when we do the post so right you know, do you want to recap them just quickly so we've got them so what's what's great about this problem what's not perfect yet what am I willing to do to make it the way I want it what am I willing to no longer do to make it the way I want it and how can I enjoy the process while I do what is necessary to make it the way I want? Yeah, I think they're quite Love profound when I, when I read them and I thought, they, you know, they benefit everybody. I'm taking notes. I'm thinking, well, how can I do that? How can I improve things? Right. I love that. That's fantastic. Um, so my top three things. Um, number one, have a plan. I think having a plan, um, even if your plan is just for today, just for the next hour. Um, even if your plan is to look up resources in order to write a plan. I mean, you don't want to get into analysis paralysis, of course, but having something written down, like, okay, right, what I'm doing isn't working right now. Well, what can I do? Well, I can do step A, step B, step C, and maybe I'll stop doing step D, yeah. right? Yeah. Based on those questions, right? But having some kind of plan mm. helps right with those uncertainty with that because you know where you're going now bear in mind I'm saying that like it's easy to create a plan but look as you just said sometimes Chris if you can't think of exactly what to do you can at least work out what not to do often you know yeah. so you can always start there um Number two, I think this is something that was good um, when I was suffering because I, I get very intense anxiety. And during those moments, I have to focus on what you can be certain about. Now, sometimes it's not even related to the work, but, you know, you can be certain about, well, like I can be certain that I've got food in the house mm -hmm. or 
if not I can be certain that you know I can get some sleep or I can be certain if not you know I can be certain that if I need to go outside for a walk I can go outside for a walk um I can be certain that I know that I'm still going to be in this house next week now bear in mind there are times in your lives when all of these are going to be like one or the other you know are going to be not certain, but there'll be things that you are certain about. So focusing on what you can be certain about is a good way to manage anxiety. Like what, what do I know that is around me that's stable and secure? Because my biggest level of anxiety, I mean, I've had many and often, almost always before I launch a project, I'm always like, this is going to work, you know, but you have to keep that. That's the thing. Like I'm feeling internally like that, but I have to keep on turning up and I have to keep on pushing. I have to keep presenting because of my business and it's my life. So I can't, you know, I don't want to stop in those moments. So I focus on what I can do rather than what I can't do. And I think that's one of the really important things. And um, I think when I was, traveling the world when I was stuck outside of of Australia for eight months and I didn't know what country I was going to be in so I didn't know where I was going to live what time zone I was going to be in or whether I could even get in or whether I would be breaching my visa or all of those things I didn't know what paperwork to do and all of that like literally day to day was incredibly filled with anxiety but we made it through by just focusing on what we, what can you do rather than what you can't? Because in those extreme moments, that was eight months and it was intense of like not knowing where I was going to be. Like, you know, it's, uh, it was a big challenge. Okay. So the last one, I, I think maybe I'll put a bonus one in there as well, but the, the third one is to write it down and reframe it. Every time when I get into a cloud of thoughts, that's negative or that is where I'm feeling overwhelmed or where I am experiencing very high emotions or very high uncertainty or inner dialogue is mm, not the best it could be. Yeah. What I'm doing is I, I basically get a big piece of paper, a three or whatever tabloid piece of paper. And I write in the middle, you know, what the heck is bothering me? Or like, you know, my, add some more expletives in there but I'll go around and I'll write everything big and small you know it'll be like you know I don't have time for this or you know what happens if this fails or what about my tax I've forgotten about my tax or what about you know all of these things any random little bit I'll just pour it out onto the page fill the damn thing up with every little doubt insecurity anything right every little intrusive thought will be written on that page and then I go around and I flip the script so obviously I'll go in and I will write either a solution to it because most of them have good solutions even if the solution is you can't deal with this right now but you're going to make a calendar appointment to visit it on this date right yeah. whatever it is. So you write solutions to every single thing. Now, some of the things, some things in life you can't solve. You either have to learn to accept it. You have to learn to change it, or you have to learn to walk away because mm. those are the only three options. Yeah. So if it's something that you can't change, you have to learn to either accept it or walk away. There are lots of things in life that are a bit like that. And mm. sometimes those things could be, you know, um, trying to think of like a good example of that but you know there were for instance you know there could be challenging living situations you know I've been in in the past where couldn't change the situation so I could either just learn to deal with it or change where I was which you know was a big 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 move you know Mm -hmm. so there's lots of things like that but the point is, is that by the time, and the thing is your brain is wonderful. Everyone's brain. When you start to write down all these challenges, your brain automatically, it's already in like problem solving mode. Mm. And just having that whole page filled with solutions. Oh, what a difference it makes. It's it makes a huge much, difference. I suppose just don't get, you can stop you going into overwhelm because you can mm. it's out of the head and onto the page. You're right. And yeah. even, even if, you know, and even on that earlier thing of like writing down, like knowing what you can be certain about writing that down 
and yeah. that is a good place to just that's a basis what you what can you do if, if it's if you're not focusing on what can't you do yeah. do that yeah. and I think last bonus is to stop comparison but yeah. I would say stop comparison in a negative way like I feel like um it's one thing to look for uh, ideas on what you can do it's a different thing if you're looking at that and saying I'll never be that or I can't yeah. be that or I'm no good because this person's there because the truth is is everyone's been their journey mm. you know some people have been very very blessed and fortunate and are very privileged in their journey and we all are privileged in our own different ways um, and some people are less privileged or less fortunate but regardless the journey still has had to happen and there is still there's no journey without obstacle whatever that obstacle might be you just often don't get to see it recognize and everyone's yeah. got their own obstacles and their own things going on mm -hmm. and you know social media isn't always what you you know it's not a face value kind of thing there's lots of stuff going on behind the scenes like you know even just us talking about the amount of business stuff that we do behind the scenes most artists won't know that that's all going on but that's mm -hmm. going on basically for pretty much every business yeah so yeah. stop negative comparison yeah. um any final thoughts chris there is actually there's a couple of things that, that we have done over the time remember like you write on the mirror so you've got your mirror yes. in the bathroom and get your lipstick out and you can write you know i am enough i love myself um whatever you need to hear that's you know every morning you can get up and see all these beautiful words it, it, they just you know get into you we let all the bad yeah. stuff get into us extremely easily there's <laughs> all this good stuff we need to hear get your lipstick out write on your mirror all the lovely things um that you need to hear and i tell you what this this magic in this process because mm. i've been involved doing all this stuff for many many years my daughter has been to a few things I went into her apartment she's got sticky notes all over her walls you know saying all beautiful things about herself she used to do it at home and her bedroom mirror was all that it's not something that I started and said you know this is a good idea to do she's seen me doing it so if right. you've got children yeah. you know it's a good example to set a fantastic example to sh you know start teaching them self-love self-worth as well and you don't need to wait for someone else to say it to you you say it to you and I think that's the thing we always wait for a parent or a loved one or a boss or anyone to yes. say it to us forgetting that we are actually totally capable of saying those things to ourselves and they yeah. still mean just as much in fact they mean more when it's coming yeah. from yourself yeah because some people find it extremely hard to say these things so it does mean so much coming from yourself Another, another great thing that I did was a, a strength test, a Gallup strength test. Mm. And that was that was really great because all of this that we've been talking about today is finding out more about yourself. Right. So a Gallup strength test for me, like I found out, um, I can't remember what order, it was strategic, a learner, achiever and input were my top four. And once you find, like, I think you can do the Gallup strength test and get your top five or so free online. And it, it's fantastic because there's ups and downsides to be in these things. So as you go, oh, yeah. I, like, I think, oh, mine sounded really good, you know, but strategic, I do need a strategy. I love a good strategy, then I'm off and running. But if I don't have a good strategy, then the wheels can fall off. But before I knew that, I didn't understand. A learner's yeah. the same. A learner's fantastic having a learner, but I can keep on wanting to learn and I can keep reading books and the next book and the next book. <laughs> there's, a there's, there's an There's an ups and a downside to all of these things. Achiever, yeah. I found the most interesting because I need to feel like I've achieved something every day. So it was very easy for me not to feel like I've achieved. Huh. It's interesting isn't it even though yeah you, you know yeah you do things every day if i hadn't if i'd only half done it or three quarters done it it wasn't achieved it wasn't wasn't complete 
So it's yeah. like for maybe an achiever to have a smaller list that can be ticked, chunked down more. So it's gone, oh, yes, I did do that because I need my little endorphins with the tick. <laughs> the <laughs> achiever. Yeah, it's very yeah. interesting. Um, That's fascinating. This, the input, one, the... The input oh, dear, one, that was a real bit of a killer because I need to collect all sorts of input before I move forward. So it's mm. great because I like to collect information, but it's the same as the learner. How much do I actually need before I get my bum off the ground and actually keep right? So I found that like really interesting to, um, to monitor myself to go, okay, am I being an, an over inputter here? Have I actually got enough information to do it? Right. So it's like this, you know, doing whatever we need to do to promote ourselves hmm. as an artist. Stop collecting the information for me and get out and do it. You know, so doing a, a strength test like that was, I think that was the Gallup one I did many years ago, was yeah. I found really beneficial because it's, I know myself a little bit more through doing that. I love that. I, I think that knowing yourself is really important and even doing things like the five love languages or there's another yeah. one that's similar to Gallup that's like the DISC series. Yes, the disc, but, yeah. you know, there's like a lot of them, but I think like, and for me, and I mean, I spoke about it earlier and I'm talking about it a lot, but like learning that I was ADHD changed the game for me. Because yeah. I always just thought I'm a terrible, broken person. I can't get my shit together, <laughs> you know, and then just realize it's just my brain works a little differently. But by knowing you can put things in place. Now, it doesn't change the scenario, but yeah. what it does is it allows you to look at whatever's going on and being like, OK, well, this wasn't working for me, but here's a bunch of stuff I can do. Because here's the thing, there's a lot of other people um, that have gone through similar things. Even when it's like you're talking about the Gallup strength test, there's like lots of things that, um, you know, will help, you know, if you are a learner or if you are, in, you know, in searching for input all the time, here's mm. things you can do to help you make that, you know, that leap, I suppose. I think it's just awareness even, you know, you're aware mm. that you go, okay, I'm obviously, you know, there's there's a positive side and a, and a negative side to it. I'm veering down this one too much that I need to, right. you know. Need to up it. Yeah, it's well, fine. Yeah, it's great. Just all information, all getting to know ourselves. I love that. Well, that is fantastic. So for everyone out there, what is the thing that you are uncertain about? Or what are the things that you find challenging? Tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. As always, our social links are down in the description. Make sure you give us a follow so you can catch future episodes. The next episode, we are going to be talking about how to use influencer marketing. I will see you all next time and I will chat to you later. Bye. See you then.